6 a.m. on race day, doing a time trial today. Never thought I would say I skipped a crit yesterday to do a time trial, but coronavirus times, I feel like uh, I know a lot of people who have gotten it in the last week, and time trial just seems like the only uh, safe way to race right now. So I'm going to try to break this day down the way that I normally do uh, a Zwift race or an RGT race. Uh, it's not just going to be race footage because... There's not much to break down riding a time trial. It would just be footage of me riding in a straight line at a consistent wattage for hopefully around an hour and five minutes, something like that. It's 40 KTT today. Um, I think for a time trial, most of what you need to break down is everything around it. So first thing is I try to make everything as easy on myself as possible. Cold brew coffee, overnight oats, Nothing I have to do in the morning, just get up, eat it. I can even just take it and have it in the car, uh, sitting down and eating today. It keeps me from having to do anything in the morning, stress about anything in the morning. I think the more race day stress you can just knock off, the more you can do the day before, the better. super messy somebody told me that my car looks like a cyclist car it looks like you spent more money on the bike than the car that makes sense to me because I don't race the car I race the bike um, it's a Honda Civic this race is in the middle of nowhere when I say it's in the middle of nowhere if you've heard that podcast s town about Woodstock Alabama I just went through Woodstock, Alabama. I'm headed toward a place that is so remote there is no address. It's just where this road meets this other road, but it's like unincorporated county, so there's no address there. Uh, hopefully I can find it, we'll, we'll see. So I've never done a time trial voluntarily in the past. I've only ever done them when they're part of a stage race or an Omnium and you have to do the time trial to do the next stage. But during lockdown, I've worked on my steady power a little bit more. And this is probably the only type of racing where I'm not gonna be around anybody. So it just makes sense to get out here and give it a go. It's also like a new challenge for that reason. It's something I've never done before. So the plan for the day, I'm gonna try to pace it pretty conservatively. I have done a lot of uh, testing of my pacing and trying to get better at holding a pace on Zwift, on RGT, on the trainer. So I have a good idea of what I can do like physiologically, but when you put the Alabama heat on top of that, it can be, it, it can lower your capabilities a little bit. And outside it's just always gonna be different. So. Rather than assume that I'm gonna be stronger outside, I'm setting my pacing plan a little bit more conservatively, and then if I feel like I still have it in the last few K, I'll kick back up. So that pacing plan for today, I'm gonna to try and start around, well, my goal to, is to average about 280 watts, which is like 4.7 watts a kilo for me. I'm gonna do that with a negative split, which is just best practice for a time trial. So. I start at 265 and I have set my Garmin to automatically lap every 10K. So the things on my screen will be my three second power, my lap power, elapsed time and distance. So I know that it's a 40K TT overall, I'm breaking it down into fourths. First fourth, 265, 275, 285, 295 but it's better to pace it that way than to do 310 off the line blow yourself up and then that's going to reduce your capacity for the whole rest of the effort so i'm gonna i'm gonna try that out we'll see how it goes at the race now pinning numbers everybody's masked up let's see if you can see everybody's masked up uh, numbers laid out on the table. You just walk up and say your name and they get give you the number. Hopefully that's the closest I have to get to anybody today. So I'm going to wear my mask to the start line. 
feel pretty good about the like safety level. They're also not posting results today on site. We will just race, leave, and the results will be on the internet later. So I think all of the necessary safety precautions are in place. Here's a, here's a dicey move. I'm cutting the excess off my number. Sometimes the officials don't like that, but when they give me one of these gigantic numbers, like that's still taking up most of the room on my body. If I leave all the white space on it, there's not enough real estate on my back for that. Riding to the start, masked up. So the couple things I've done here, I uh, got my lovely partner to tighten the sleeves. She, she sews, so she sewed my sleeves where they fit a little better, not flapping around. And then on the bike, I double wrapped my tops so I can get in that position and be a little bit more comfortable. Kind of like they do for Perry Roubaix for the bumps, but I'm doing it just because I'm going to be sitting on there all day. Uh, going to roll up to the start mask on, pop it off, and we'll go. So my power was a little below what I was aiming for, but my time was a little better than I thought it would be, and I used bi better best bike split dot com which is an awesome tool that you plug your gear your course all that stuff into and it'll give you an estimated finishing time so i don't know better speed lower power i guess that means i was a little more aero than i thought kind of fell apart around the 25k mark made several mistakes i'll talk through those on the way back first let's go get some food down and see how the teammates are doing mistake number one left my eye sock in the car gonna use it to cool down now but really would have helped out there on the course it's so hot today it's probably 95 degrees now probably feels like 100 in the sun <sighs> I think that contributed to me falling apart got a smoothie easy way to get some calories in some protein in right after I'm done steak number two I brought some chamois cream and here it is still unopened in my race bag so Getting here earlier would have been would have been huge. The last thing is I bought two gels, left them at home. They didn't even make it into the race bag to get left in the race bag in the car. So I did a lot of prep with the uh, the ice sock, the gels, the chamois cream, and I just left them in the car. Didn't even didn't have them. Uh, I cut it real close getting to the start line two minutes before I was uh, set to go and the officials were not super happy with me. But I did make my start time. Uh, I was shooting according to best bike split for about an hour and two minutes and it looks like I was more like an hour and 45 seconds ish. That's going by the moving time on my Garmin. We'll see, it, see what the official time is uh, when I get that back. But I, so I was better on that worse on my power I think I'll look at the Strava file when I get home and probably put that up here and do a little bit of analysis but my breakdown of the race is can't put out quite as much power in the extreme heat um, it's 95 degrees direct sunlight out here on the course and uh, also can't put out as much power in this position and I did try to lay my hands or my forearms on those double wrapped tops of my bars for most of the race and then also try and turtle my shoulders in and keep my head down and uh, at a certain point I realized I probably can't go as fast if I'm uh, or probably can't put out as much power if I'm staying in that position but I might be going faster and I was watching my power dip especially between like 25k and 30k really watching my power dip and speaking of the chamois cream uh my taint just started hurting and i was trying to find an, another position on the saddle and i decided basically i'm just going to commit to this position and keep it as close to the target power as i can rather than relent on the position a little bit and then put out exactly the power goal because it should be faster in the long term and i think that played out. I think that's uh, what it's going to show when I look at the data. 
no way to know without doing another 40k TT and doing the opposite, but uh, overall, pretty happy with it. I'll, I'll look at the data when I get home. So I should have mentioned this earlier, but I was racing Merck style, which means that you're racing the time trial on a standard road bike, a la Eddie Merck's, which is why I double wrapped my tops, which is why I wasn't running deeper wheels. I don't have a time trial bike. I don't like doing time trials enough to invest in a whole bike just for that. But this race did have a Merck's category. So the results are in here and I am at the top of the results here won the Mercs category. Best time trialist among people who don't do time trials. Finish time coming in at 1 hour 35 seconds. So that's better than I thought I would do, honestly. that's I was pacing myself to be closer to like an hour, two and a half. Hour, sorry, hour, two minutes, 30 seconds, something like that. Um, so I was quicker than I thought I would be. Power wasn't quite where exactly where I thought it would be, but we'll get into that in a second here. So here's the activity. Uh, you can see, looking at the splits here, this is the full course. I averaged about 260 watts, 259 for the full course. I was aiming for 280, so it came up a little bit short. I think the heat, almost everyone I talked to was somewhere between 15 and 30 watts shy of whatever their pacing plan was, and I think that was just the heat. I do think it would have helped had I remembered that ice sock. I think it would have helped had I used chamois cream because I was really trying to find somewhere to be on the saddle where I could still put, up, put out power. And it would have really helped if I had had that caffeine gel, I think, just for my rate of perceived exertion. But you can see here, I pretty much nailed uh, the pacing on the way out, actually. For the first 25K, I was right on 265, 275. When I bumped it up to 285, that was when it, the wheels really fell off. So this first half, I nailed it. And then for the second half on the way back there, it, it was two things. Uh, one was that that was where the heat really started to get to me. That was where sitting on the nose of the saddle really started to get to me. But it was also a uh, headwind going back. And I think at the same time, all those factors uh, came in. I was getting uncomfortable in that position and then realized I was hitting a headwind. So I had to stay in that position because I was going to lose so much time if I came out of it. Um, it was just a lot to deal with all at once. And, uh, you know, based on how I feel today, I've got a lot of delayed onset muscle soreness in the legs, uh, especially the glutes and especially sort of the uh, inside right above my knee. And I think that's because I'm not used to pushing in that hunched over position. You just push a different way on the pedals. So I really don't think I don't think I was just being soft. I think I really did sort of max out the ability that I could have done on the day. You can see some of the splits over here. So everyone who's ahead of me here was on a time trial bike. So that's good to see. One amazing one though, Davis Adams, crazy effort on the day. Uh, he won uh, Sunny King, Crit, Cat 2, and the Am Athens Twilight Amateur Finals. Uh, in the same year, a couple years ago. So he's he's a beast on the bike, but he was also on a full time trial rig. So I was the best of the guys who were not on a time trial rig. And I was, uh, I would have been actually based on my time, like right dead in the middle of the guys who were on time trial rigs. So my takeaways from this are my pacing was okay. Maybe go a little bit more conservative on the pacing or just more extreme with the splits. So I think I went a little too hard off the line. I, I hit above 300 when I was sprinting up. I really should have just eased into it. Uh, underestimated the heat. Got to take the heat very seriously. And I do need to spend more time in that arrow position if I want to put out good solid power. So if anyone's a better time trialist than me, obviously I don't do a lot of time trials. I'm not a time trial expert. This is me uh, getting into something, trying to apply the same analysis that I apply to all bike racing, just take it to a new discipline for me. So if anybody has some uh, tips or tricks, feel free to drop them for me and uh, might throw a time trial related video up here. Thanks.